Hello, my name is Alvin Chen, and with my colleague Jonathan Rubin, we're happy to present on efficient video-based deep learning for ultrasound-guided needle insertion. This work is supported by Philips Healthcare. Needle insertions are one of the most common applications of medical ultrasound and a first step in many clinical procedures. Ultrasound is utilized for its portable, non-invasive, and real-time capabilities, including at the point of care, and studies have shown improvements in safety and efficacy with the use of ultrasound compared to without. However, it can be challenging. Uh, Ultrasound-guided needle placement currently requires uh, specialized training and clinical skill to perform. And to first demonstrate why things can be challenging, here we show three examples of where the needle is very difficult to locate by human eye from a static frame. In each case, there's many structures that might easily be mistaken for the needle but aren't. And as it turns out, the needle tip is actually here. And these are uh, typical scenarios. On the left is a short needle insertion where the needle tip is just entering the frame. In the middle, the needle is being introduced at a steep angle. And on the right, the needle is nearly invisible because of surrounding hyperechoic tissue structures. Now, one major advantage, fortunately, that humans have is the ability to recall temporal information in a video. So here, if instead of just presenting a single frame, we play the entire video clip, we can begin to more easily infer the needle position based on motion even when needle visibility itself is poor. And so with this in mind, our approach was to set up the problem as a video-based object detection problem, which would allow us to extend deep learning architectures developed for single image object detection into the video domain. And in doing so, our goal was to demonstrate uh, robustness in challenge cases, high specificity, the leveraging of spatial temporal information in ultrasound, and speed on actual ultrasound devices, including real-time performance. A brief note on the data used for this study. We built up a data set of a variety of ex vivo tissues, including multiple transducer types, uh, imaging settings, needle sizes, and bevel orientations. And this resulted in about 12,000 uh, needle insertion sequences in total, which were then divided into multiple shorter one-second clips. And these were then uh, labeled with annotated bounding boxes and then it split into about 30,000 short clips for training and about 5,000 independent holdout clips for validation. So in this work, we needed to decide what sort of backbone detector architecture to use, including a single stage or two stage detector, a data or transformer model, or a tubular detector. We opted for the tiny YOLO V3 model and we went one step further where we created an ultra tiny version by downsampling every feature map by a factor of eight. In the end, we ended up with a backbone that had just over half a million parameters. This slide shows the three different approaches that we used in this work, starting with a standard 2D baseline approach where we feed in a single image and we predict a single label for the frame of ultrasound. The second approach was a 2.5D approach. This is a two-stream neural network that captures both the appearance information for a single ultrasound frame and then motion information. So in this approach, we feed in multiple frames, but we still predict a single label for the final frame in the sequence. For the motion stream, we utilize a compounded difference image. The third approach was the 3D ultra-tiny YOLO model. Here we apply a spatial temporal convolution to a stack of input frames and using 3D convolution we convolve out the temporal dimension until we reach a 2D feature map that we then feed to the YOLO detector. So once again this model is multiple frames input and a single uh, label for the final frame in the sequence. We also looked at various additional improvements to these models, including applying spatial and temporal augmentations using focal loss, as well as including prior knowledge in the form of a geometric prior, where we would penalize predictions that were far away from some known distribution. And so this slide shows our results. We have the various models on the x-axis. As we go from a 2D model to uh, 3D models on the right-hand side, we also apply the three improvements that I mentioned, and we can see that the average precision increases as we make improvements to the models. We also see quite a large improvement for short and steep insertions, which are challenging use cases that we were particularly interested in. 
and this applies for an average precision of 50 and then also an average precision of 70. This slide shows some video results. Utilizing the models that take into account the temporal information, we can see that the needles are able to be detected successfully. But if we apply the baseline model here, then the 2D model fails miserably and is not able to detect the needles in either, any of these frames. So in conclusion, we presented approaches that are conceptually simple and allow us to perform video-based deep learning on ultrasound data for the purpose of needle detection. In our ongoing and future work, we hope to make improvements to the data as well as the model and to further optimize the speed and accuracy trade-off, as well as provide more validation on clinical data. Thank you very much for listening.